Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're gonna be working on this interesting but really challenging viewer suggested in tech world, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. The question is evaluate this integral from zero to infinity. Then we have ln of x plus one times ln of x over x times x plus one dx. It's a pretty tricky integral. So I will be using Ram religion master theorem and I'll be starting off with this Mellon transform. And if you want to know what the Ramanujan Master Theorem or Mellon Transform is, since it is too long to write down everything on the board. So I posted the link to the video description about it. So if you want to know, please check that out. So for this integral, first I'll be using Mellon Transform of the form log to the power of, say, n of the argument of 1 plus x over 1 plus x now to the power of m plus 1. In order to get integral from 0 to infinity. And then we have x to the power of l minus 1 um, over 1 plus x to the power of still m plus 1. Okay, and that times now the log to the power of n of 1 plus x, and then we have dx, right? And then for our integral, we will talk about when your n is equal to 1, and then your m is equal to 0. Okay, so that's why now we can rewrite this i of e now then. I of E has to be then equal to this integral. If you call this integral as just the I, right? Then I E has to be from zero to infinity. Okay, then we have X to the power of L minus one. Okay, that times log of one plus X now over just the one plus X. And then we have DX, okay. Okay, then if you work this out, right? If you work this out, then it has to be the same as, okay, we have the negative sign first. So negative one, parenthesis, okay, the psi. I'll talk about it. Okay, psi of now one minus e. Okay, and then that minus psi of one. Now close your parenthesis. Then we can now multiply this gamma function. Gamma of one minus e. Okay, that times gamma of E, now over gamma of now one. Okay, so let's talk about this psi, right, for a moment. So here, the psi of S is the same as, now we can represent the psi in the form of the gamma function. Uh, derivative of the gamma of now S over just the gamma of S. Then for our case, we can talk about how our gamma of one, this is equal to one, and at the same time, gamma of one minus e, that times gamma of e. That is the same as now pi over uh, sine pi times now e. Okay, we'll be using this. So that is why if you rewrite this i e, Okay, IE has to be the same as negative one. Okay, that times now the psi of one minus E. That minus psi of one. Okay, that times this value, pi over sine pi times now E. Okay, so, but then again, we want to compute this I prime of now zero. Okay, this is what we want to compute, right? It has to be the same as then integral from zero to infinity. Uh, we have that ln x. Okay, I'll be slightly rewriting this in a different form. So ln x over x times ln of one plus x over one plus x. Okay, then dx. This is what we want to compute. So that's why now we'll be working on Taylor series. Taylor series just to talk about this psi of one minus e, this term. Okay, so psi one minus e has to be equal to now psi of one. Okay, and then that minus derivative of it times um, 
L. And then now plus um, second derivative of the psi, that times now e square over now 2 minus and so on. Okay, so let's keep working at the Taylor series. So this i prime of e. Okay, we can keep working on this. We had the negative sign first. And parenthesis, it is negative psi now prime of 1. Okay, and then that times L plus second derivative of the psi of 1. That times now E square over 2. And then that plus and so on. That times, okay, pi over pi E. That minus, um, that minus then pi cubed times E cubed over now 3 factorial plus and so on. It has to be the form. So that's why this i prime of e, we can rewrite this easily as the psi prime of now 1. That minus psi double prime of 1 times now L over 2. Okay, based on this, let's talk about i of 0. So your i of 0. Okay, i of 0 is going to be just the first derivative of the psi of 1. Okay, and then your i prime of 0, which is what we're interested in, has to be negative of second derivative of the psi of 1, now that over 2. But then again, we need to recall this now psi s. This was gamma, derivative of the gamma of s over gamma of the s, okay, which has to be the same as derivative of this gamma s with respect to the s. Okay, so that's why now we can talk about when your s is near now zero. Then we can talk about this gamma of s. Okay, it is going to be the same as now then uh, 1 over s. Okay, that minus this Euler's matrimony constant, this little gamma. Okay, and the that plus 1 over 2. That parenthesis, little gamma square uh, plus pi over 6 times s minus 1 over 6. That parenthesis, this little gamma cube. And then plus, now, little gamma times pi square over 2. Plus now, 2 times the zeta function of now 3. And then that times this s square. Okay, that has to be your gamma of s. But then again, we already know gamma of now s plus 1. This has to be the same as s times gamma of s. So using this, gamma of s plus 1. Okay, it is going to be now then 1 minus little gamma times s plus 1 over 2. And then that parenthesis, little gamma square, uh, plus pi over 6. That times now s square. Minus 1 over now 6, parenthesis, little gamma cube. And then plus little gamma times pi square over 2. That plus 2 times zeta of 3. Close your parenthesis, then we should multiply s cube. Now we need to talk about when your s is near 1, right? Just to talk about the form of this derivative of your psi of 1 at the end. Okay, so let's talk about when your s is near 1, right? So when s is near 1, um, your gamma of s, this is going to be 1 minus little gamma parenthesis s minus 1. Okay, and then that plus 1 over 2. Parenthesis, and then we have little gamma square plus pi over 6. That times this s minus 1 square. Okay. That minus 1 over 6 times, okay, your little gamma cube. Plus little gamma times now pi square over 2, and then that plus 2 times zeta of 3. 
and then close the parenthesis, then it has to be just the s minus 1 cube. Okay, based on all the work we have done, we can represent the derivative of your psi of s. Okay, so noticing how your psi of s was derivative of gamma s over gamma of s. Okay, now we can represent this derivative of psi of s, okay, using the quotient rule. So it has to be now then gamma s, okay, that times derivative, uh, second derivative of the gamma s, okay. That minus gamma, derivative of gamma s now square. That over gamma of s square, okay. Now, since we were interested in this i prime of zero, which was negative second derivative of psi of s over two, we need to talk about double prime of psi of s by working on another derivative using the quotient rule again. So it has to be a little messy representation. Okay, so your denominator is pretty clear. Square of this, which is gamma of s now to the power of four. But then again, your numerator has to be first of all, uh, let me make a bracket. Then we should have gamma prime of s. Okay, that times, I'll be making another bracket too. Times gamma of s, that times third derivative of gamma s. And then that plus now, first derivative of gamma s times second derivative of gamma s. Okay, and then that minus two times gamma derivative of gamma s times second derivative of gamma s. Okay. Close your bracket. Then after this, we should subtract some term. Minus another parenthesis, let's check. Gamma of s. That times second derivative of gamma of s minus first derivative of gamma s now square. Close your parenthesis, and then we have now one more term to multiply. That times um, two times gamma s times derivative of the gamma s. And then we are closing this big bracket. Okay, this has to be your second derivative of the psi of s, right? Okay, so now we can talk about when your s is equal to one. So for s is equal to one. We already know gamma of one is just equal to one. Okay, so that is why now we can talk about the second derivative of the psi when your s is equal to one. Even though your expression is like pretty ugly, we can talk about this in the nice form. So your second derivative of a psi of one, this is now equal to, okay, so, third derivative of gamma of now one, okay. And then that minus, first derivative of the gamma one times second derivative of gamma one. Okay, that minus, C, parenthesis, second derivative of gamma one minus first derivative of gamma one now square. Okay, that times, one more term, two times derivative of gamma one, right. Okay, so let's rewrite this, maybe using this match running constant. So if you rewrite this, then it has to be the same as um, pulling this negative sign out. And then we have this little gamma cube plus gamma times pi square over two. Then after this, we have plus two times the zeta function of three. Close your parenthesis, minus negative gamma, little gamma, times little gamma square uh, plus pi square over now six. Close your parenthesis, and then that minus uh, parenthesis, little gamma square, plus pi square over now six, minus little gamma square. Okay, that times two times negative of the little gamma. Okay, so we can keep working on this, right? So if you keep working on this, 
it looks like this is equal to um, negative of little gamma cube plus little gamma times pi squared over now two. That plus two times um, zeta of three. That plus little gamma cubed plus little gamma times pi squared over six uh, plus now little gamma times pi squared over now three. Okay, which is then going to be just equal to um, if you cancel some terms out, right? So little gamma cubed is now canceled out. Okay, and at the same time, now the other terms are canceled out too. So that is why now these two terms, this negative of little gamma pi square over two, and then little gamma times pi square over six plus little gamma times pi square over three. These terms are canceled out. So that's why what is left is going to be now negative of two times zeta of now three. Okay, so using this, now we can talk about this i prime of zero that we are looking for. So we were looking for i prime of now zero. This was negative psi double prime of one over two. We got the value of this, right? Which is now equal to um, just zeta of now three. Okay, so that's why now this integral that we are looking for which was integral from zero to infinity, and then ln x over x times ln of one plus x over one plus x dx. Okay, this is just the same as zeta of three. Okay, so that's why we can finally represent this as summation from n is equal to one to infinity. And then we have only one over n cubed. So this is the final answer for the question. Okay, this was tricky integrals. I'll be back with more videos, more questions like this sometime soon.